and to Gladiators the Challenge. Well, the challenge this year is to find a champion of the South and a champion of the North, who will then go on to battle it out for the overall championship in our grand final. And as usual, Gladiators wouldn't be Gladiators without the biggest and the best prizes. The runners-up, a fantastic holiday, Sun City in South Africa, plus £1,000. <laughs> and that's just the runners-up. The winners, £1,000 spending money, plus one of these luxurious four-wheel drive, off-the-road family vehicles. to meet our contenders who are all representing the southern half of the United Kingdom. Tonight's girls are Celia Duffield and Ingrid Reynolds. Come on, girls. Oh. Very well coordinated there, Celia. Tell us what you do and where you're working. I'm in the army and at the moment I'm living just outside Winchester. Ah, very nice part of the world. Now tell me, what exactly is it you do in the army? I'm in the Royal Logistic Corps as a driver. At the moment I'm training cadets, a uh, cadet training team. Any of them here tonight? Yeah. <laughs> just one or two. I understand that, I mean, you're a very, very fit girl and your fitness thing is cross-country skiing, isn't it? Yes, I enjoy cross-country skiing. I've been to Sweden. Very nice country, very nice country. Mm. Uh, Switzerland, Austria, normally we race in France. Well, this girl must be fit because it's hard work. Let's hear it for Celia Duffield. Off you go. OK, Ingrid, firstly, are you representing the North or the South? Definitely the South. OK. And where are you from? North Devon, a place near Barnstable. And you've got everybody in the house, I can tell. Yeah, everybody's here to support me. Well done, guys. Who have you got with you? Family, friends? I've got family, friends, local schools and the swimming club. OK. And tell us, what do you do for a living? I'm a housewife and mother. Any children? I've got two little boys, Tully and Milo, over in the audience. Hi, guys. I'm not going to ask you if you have any spare time or any hobbies, because obviously with two little children, I'm sure you don't. No, not, not a lot. <laughs> so how do you keep fit? Picking them up, mainly, and clearing up, and the hoover's pretty hard. But other than that, just a general run around the block occasionally. OK, well, we'll see how fit you are. Off you go, get yourself ready. Ingrid Reynolds! So now let's meet our male southern contenders, Paul Dunkley. And Colin Treasure! No need to show off so early on. Paul, I have a vision of you in a suit during the day. Tell us what you do. I'm an option broker, work in the city. Ooh, I don't think we've had one of those on before. So you must be a very, very busy guy because you work crazy hours and stuff. Do you have time to keep fit? I mean, obviously you do. Uh, it is difficult, yeah. I only can train in the evening, so that's when I get to do most of it, yeah. Oh, and I understand you're learning to fly helicopters. How are you finding that? Uh, a lot more difficult than I thought. It takes a lot of coordination, you know, hands and feet together, and uh, hopefully that will help me through tonight. Well, that's, that's interesting. It's difficult. It requires coordination. Well, there's one thing for sure. We won't find wolf flying in a helicopter. Um, you looking forward to the show tonight? I uh, can't wait. I just want to get, it, get into it and get started. Well, we'll let you do that. Let's hear it for Paul Dunkley. <laughs> OK, Colin, where are you from? Well, um... <laughs> Okay, yeah, if you just calm down, guys. Calm down, let me speak, yeah. Yeah, I'm from Birmingham, central Birmingham. Wow, so you're obviously representing the South, and you're a local lad. Yep, big time. Come here to do the business for my guys from Brom, yo! Yeah, I think everybody in here is from Brom. So tell us, what do you do for a living? Well, I work at a uh, club in uh, central Birmingham, and I also teach and fight back to the competitive level. And how long have you been doing that? About 10, 10 to 11 years now. Any other hobbies, any other interests? This is going to shock and probably upset a few people, but I do my table tennis to chill out, but my main cooling out period is definitely bingo. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Kickbox champion working on the doors, and you play bingo in your spare time. Well, everyone's going to have a pastime to chill out, and believe you me, that is my chilling out period. Bingo's in, man. Sorry, guys, got to be said. OK, get yourself ready. Let's hear it for Colin Treasure. Come on, Colin.
Well, it looks like the girls are ready for their first event, so let the games begin. And in the yellow atmosphere is Ingrid! And in the orange sphere, it's Celia! And they're going to be facing Rebel! The army driver rolls a self-propelled armor-plated atmosphere into the battle zone. Three points of point. Oh, impacts on Ingrid. Ingrid sees the gap. The housewife and mum. This atmosphere's action just like a school run in the car, but can't middle it on point four. Acres of space in the arena. The Glads have got to close these contenders down. Celia from Winchester. Looking to rifle some points. Ingrid, the barnstormer from Barnstable, takes a head on bash from Rebel. Ingrid breaks free again, drives towards Pod 2. Can she make it pay? No smoke, no cigar. Ingrid corners herself. She's opened up two great scoring opportunities, but hasn't scored on either part. Her atmosphere more like the TARDIS. She's got so much time and space to play with. On to Pod 1. Oh, and still no score. Now she's chasing Senior onto 4. And Senior off target, and Falcon defends that red and white dimple. Celia coming back again. Oh, takes a broadside from Rebel. John Anderson calls time. Well, Celia struggled. Ingrid was inspired, but couldn't score. How frustrating. She displayed deft control of her atmosphere after the launch. And that smack from Celia served to set her up nicely for a free roll on a pod. And sadly, it didn't pay off. So, after 60 seconds of rocks and shocks, the scores stand at nil-nil. You've seen the ladies, now let's see the men. And in the yellow atmosphere, it's Colin! And in the orange, it's Paul! And they're going to be facing the mighty Warrior and Cobra! Over to John Anderson. Push down the atmosphere's atmosphere, amazing. Paul deals in options, but his only option here is to head for the latest big bang. <laughs> Crunch time for the contenders. Now they're free to break for the pods, and it's Colin in the yellow atmosphere on three. No points. Cobra covering nicely there. Paul works in the city, and those footsies working for a three point rise. Oh, but Warrior is the white knight who prevents him from catching in. Ball too good to lose his bearings, though, looking to drop it from pot four. Oh, just wide, and Warrior there in the nick of time. Here's Colin. The Birmingham doorman finds the opening, slammed in his face by Cobra. The snake with seasons of experience in the sphere. And Warrior still keeping Paul's red Randall out of the points. Colin with a break on four, though. Can he unlock those points? Oh, he couldn't quite centre it. Colin runs out wide, but the time is running out. Good covering by Cobra and Warrior, and the scores, the same shape as the atmospheres. Well, in the dying seconds, Colin pulled a nice switch on Cobra to light the way for a free run. Scrabbles the sphere towards four, but it stays a smokeless zone. Likewise, Paul has his chance to cash in on a free run. There was plenty of fire, but no smoke. Enjoyed that. One event, no scores. Let's see a bit of sunshine training. Now, 
one of the most popular sports are doing Mauritius is parasailing, and none of us, gladiators, have done it yet. So we decided to get a volunteer, and guess what Mug was told to do it? Moi! And don't forget, the parachute is already open behind you, so all you've got to do is hang on. And I tell you what, folks, it's one of the best hangers on in the business. It's just like hang tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like hang tough, this. Speedboat, parachute, blue ocean. You know what? Your crack is you. Cheers, pal. I tell you what, a gladiator like you, Cobra, doesn't know the meaning of the word fear. Why? Because you're illiterate, that's why. Now then, when you're up there, son, keep that mouth shut, because I tell you what, you might swallow a seagull. OK? Take it away, Donald! Yeah. Well, that's got rid of him for a few hours. Anyway, enough about him. Come over here, girls. Have I ever told you about my hairdresser? I'll tell you what, she doesn't have to good either. Standing at the foot of the 36 foot wall, it's Celia! And she's going to be chased by Rio! Also getting ready to climb, it's Ingrid! And she's going to be pursued by Panther! I bet you were climbing trees, but I'm going to give this a go. I want a sort of a look at the end. See you later. Meow. Earlier, Celia told me about her chosen profession. The sport in the army is great. I've had the chance to do a lot of things that I would never have done if I hadn't have joined up. For example, I've been cross-country skiing over most of Europe. Some of the bad things, if you do have a late night, you have to get up early and go to work. You can't bring in sick. And sometimes the hours are long from 5 o'clock until midnight. However, the good things definitely outweigh the bad, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Three, two, one. Well, she's marching herself to the top of the hill right now. Celia in pink, Ingrid in the yellow. I'm sure the kids have driven her up the wall in the past. Now she's finding out what it's like for real. And the glads are up and at them. Rio on Celia, Panther on Ingrid. Ten points for Ingrid if she gets to the top first. A saucer of milk for Panther if she catches her. Ingrid and Celia looking to be very close. Oh, that hesitation by Ingrid, though, gives Celia the upper hand. And Celia almost at the summit. Oh, but Ingrid's nearly there, too. Who's first over? It's Ingrid or is it Celia? They both seem to think they've got it. Let's find out from first. Ingrid, well done. You got your leg over first. You got yourself ten points. Thank you, I'll have those. It was very close though, wasn't it? Very close, I didn't I was just looking to get over the top of the wall. I wasn't even looking at Celia, so I didn't think about that. Celia! Sorry, that was close. Never mind, John, never mind. Did you realise how close you were? No, I didn't, no. You just concentrating on going up the wall. You still got yourself five points. Well done. After going up the wall, they up their scores. 10-5 to Ingrid. Trojan concentrating on his moody look while Colin fixes his gaze on the wall. Brumbase Colin figures well, stats wise, uh, stands a metre 70 high, weighs 76 kilos, and Colin's treasure chest is 106 centimetres. Paul Dunkley's digital data reveals that he's 12 centimetres taller and 15 kilos heavier. Three, two, one. <laughs> Colin, a bingo fanatic, sweating on the number 10 at the top of this wall. Paul looking for the altitude without the help of the helicopter. But the guys taking their time, they're making it too easy for the climbing kings. And here they come. Trojan on Colin's case and Saracen chasing Paul. Colin trying the chimney, but Trojan's in a position to sweep him down. Paul in the lead, trying to escape Saracen on the escarpment. Oh, and Trojan stretching out for a piece of the treasure. Oh, and Saracen scoops Paul away. That came from nowhere. And Trojan's got Colin in the harness. It's merely a matter of when, and it's now. Both boys swept from the wall and out of the point. Saracen clawed back Paul's lead with incredible speed, ripped the points from his grasp, and Trojan, well, he took his time to make sure there was no treasure uncovered on this wall. Two hard, tough events, still nothing to show for it. But still to come, sumo ball, suspension bridge, and hang tough. Join us after the break here on Gladiators. So, welcome.
one back. Moving on into our next event. And the first up to walk the bridge is Celia. And she's going to be facing Eliza. Sergeant Celia on the bridge head, standing 170 height wise and 63 kilos heavy, which means she's facing a gladiator who's 18 centimeters taller and 7 kilos heftier. Three, two, one. Celia advances into battle to capture Laser's platform and the 10 points. Opening shot to Laser's head. Laser returns fire. Oh, Celia down, but not out. Laser says, I'll seal your fate in a moment. The army girl with a tactical retreat, a real battery of artillery raining down on her. But Laser can't cut through the defense sufficiently. Celia hanging on. Laser with one final blitz before the time up. Swinging and hooking, canoeing away up there. Celia's in trouble. Taking it right left. Oh, she's gone. With one second remaining on the clock, one of the best bridge battles in a long, long time. A bridge too far for Celia. Boyfriend Reg there. Looking at the finish again, Laser swipes Celia with a mighty left, then nails her with that hammerhead combination and accepts Celia's surrender. And the next up to walk the bridge is Ingrid! And she's going to be facing... Her name is Rio! Well, earlier this week, Ingrid showed us her training regime. There's nothing like a game of beach gauntlet, and this is nothing like it. I'd rather face any of the gladiators than my family. Oh, here we go, guys! My dad! against Rio, and unless she's used to the first day of the sales, Ingrid's gonna find this tough. Rio trying to land a clean shot, and Ingrid trying to tie her up. Rio with the swings, Ingrid in trouble. Oh, her balance is gone, leaves the bridge, and for the Devonshire girl, Rio is her exeter. Ingrid's family reluctantly lead another chorus of another one bites the dust. Ingrid tried to mix it with Rio, but found herself in trouble. Lost her balance, and Rio helped her off with a cheeky tap. After three events, the scores remain the same. Celia 5, Ingrid 10. OK, moving straight into the men. And the first up is Paul. And he's going to be facing 20 stone of the mighty Warrior. Over to John Anderson. Contender. Warrior trying to dazzle his man with those teeth. Three, two, one. It's Paul, the options broker, now going for broke. Gets one in and gets one back. Keeps coming forward. Warrior won't take this line down. Paul doesn't sell himself short, takes his share, but gets his fingers burnt there. It's Paul's mum, Elizabeth, and his girlfriend, Olivia, disappointed with that. Well, Paul, that really was a clash of the titans, that one. Well, I took his first big hit, but the second and third were a bit of a problem. And you could see the way he was just winding you up, winding it up, waiting for that big hit on you. Yeah, he just got me unbalanced, and then, uh, then you're off after that, aren't you? Pretty scary, eh? Uh, it wasn't scary, it was good fun, actually. Well done. Let's hear from Warrior and Paul. <laughs> and the last of our male contenders to run the bridge is Colin! <laughs> Rhino! Well, that's bad luck to be facing Rhino, but talking of luck, Colin told me more about his love of bingo. Everyone always has a good laugh and joke at me because they're saying, oh, it's for the old dead bodies to play this and to play that. But at the end of the day, you know, I enjoy it. It's, it's totally different to what I do. Uh, the fighting, the hectic lifestyle. Calms me down. Nice atmosphere. And plus I can win some money out of it. Knowing that I won three grand not too long back and everyone started, yeah, we'll come with you, we'll come with you. But I win my three grand all for myself, so. Three, two, one. 
colleague comes out and he's looking to be Kelly's eye, number one in this game. Rhino wants to call it and tell him his number's up. Oh, Rhino's got him, number four, he's on the floor. And Rhino's showing off with his Norman Wisdom walk, and look at that. I'm dancing, Mr. Grimstow. A bit of Elvis thrown in. Rhino charges down the bridge, a bit of argy-bargy, and Colin finds himself shoved off the bridge, out of the point and on the deck. After three events, the numbers are naught and naught. Two fat zeros. Let's get back to the sunshine. You know, Warrior, this is one of the most beautiful golf courses I've ever been on. How many have you been on? Well, this is the first one, actually. But here we go. Let's have a try. Oops. <sighs> you know your problem, don't you? You're standing too close to the ball. All oh, right. After you've hit it. Temper, Warrior. Oh, yeah? Just took my tee shot straight into a golf buggy. Bounced off the golf buggy, hit a tree stub, bounced up, hit a palm tree, knocked a coconut down, it walked straight on the head. Let me run that by it again. You've teed off. Yeah. Your ball's gone into a golf buggy. Yeah. It's crashed into a tree. Yep. Yeah. And a coconut's landed on Wolf's head. Yeah, yeah, what should I do? Take a five iron. It's the, the way he tells them. First up on sumo ball, it's Celia! She's going to be facing Falcon. Over to Johnny Anderson. Contendo ready! Anto ready! And Celia will be taking quite a strain against the Falcon, who stands the same height as Celia, but weight-wise is four kilos heavier. So it's 10 for dislodging Falcon from the platform, or 5 for hanging on for the half minute. That's the target set for 30-year-old Celia. And it's not all about push and pull. Balance also plays an important part in this event. Boyfriend Reg feeling the strain too with Mum and Dad, Daphne and Victor. Falcon shouldering her responsibility, shifting the sumo ball, but Celia soldiering on. And when push comes to shove, these two look evenly matched. Celia's latest posting is five points on the board. That's it. Time up. Phew, that was hard work. Well done. Reg looks relieved, happy with five points. Well, despite the effort, no one really on edge in that event. Next up, it's Ingrid. And she's going to be facing Lightning. And the pleasure is all ours. The blonde lightning bolt stands a metre 70 and weighs 58 kilos. Well, Ingrid's figures compare well. She's five centimetres taller and nine kilos heavier. Three, two, one. The Barnstable bombshell is no pushover. She's got eight brothers and sisters and she's also a swimming teacher. But she's not planning on diving from this tonight. Lightning gritting her teeth, but she's going to be hard pushed to get the better of Ingrid. One of Ingrid's fans getting behind her, and Ingrid could do with a bit of help for the big final shove. Her sisters Rachel, Heidi and Amy there. Ingrid spends a lot of leisure time with her family on the beach, but she's never encountered a beach ball this soft before. That's it, five points. Well played. No excuses from Lightning, and Ingrid excuses herself from the platform. Husband Julian, just pleased she got through it. Well, Ingrid, I thought you might have an advantage there, just being a little bit bigger than Lightning, but uh, she's tough. Yeah, she is, but the big thighs definitely helps on that one. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> yeah. I don't <laughs> eat all that food for nothing. <laughs> she did very well indeed. In fact, I thought, with her being a little bit bigger, I was just saying, you know, she might knock you off, but my goodness, you're tough. I tried so hard. I put all my power into it. You've really got to get low and dig in and push as hard as you can. But also, there's lots of different tactics as well. But uh, we didn't have too much turning either, did we? Yeah. I mean, I think we both tried, but we were trying at the same time. But steady girls, absolutely. Well done, you picked up five points. Let's hear it for Ingrid and for Lightning. Technique, turning and tactics on the sumo ball. Celia with 10, Ingrid with 15 on the scoreboard. So we now move into the men's event with Paul. And he's going to be facing Ace. Oh, just like looking at my own reflection. Earlier, Paul told me why he was here. The reason I initially applied for Gladiators was to give myself uh, an incentive to train. Come the new year, I wanted to get back into some sort of shape and I find training extremely dull. So 
the focus I needed was to aim for the gladiator trial to see if I could actually get through the trials, which obviously I have done because I'm now here talking to you, but that's enough talk, time for action. Three, two, and action is what Gladiators five. is all about. Ace aiming to dunk Paul Dunkley, and Paul occasionally finds time for a game of golf. But this is the first time he's needed the correct grip on a ball. Ace with the advantage, plenty of shove from those shoulders. Paul digging deep, Olivia shouting encouragement. And Ace dealing with everything Paul has to offer, pushing him back. Well, oh, he's going, he's going, he's gone! Oh, broke the ball. Still fails to open his account on the scoreboard. Olivia distraught, and Ace amusing himself, going for a little jog. The end saw Paul edging towards oblivion, trying to shove the brakes on, but Ace was like a bull in that marketplace. Colin's sister there, Carol, leading the cheers, and Cobra pulling faces before he pushes the ball. Three, two, one. Colin's treasure trove, ten points for a win or five for a draw, and Cobra throwing it around, and it looks like Colin's sandwich between nowhere and a hard place. Teetering on the edge of failure, scoots round the circumference and somehow pushes it back. Cobra dominating the play, but it looks like Colin can cope. Colin pushing back and Cobra's dumped on the deck. Keeps hold of the rope, but it's no ball for either of them up there. Cobra recovers. Snake leads a charmed life. Cobra with the pushback. Oh, he's down again. Time up, and that's what sumo ball's all about. It's party time among Colin's treasures. They've struck gold. Exciting games of sumo ball we've seen. I was very confused. I thought um, I pushed Colin off in the beginning, and uh, that completely threw me when he was still on there. Well, he kept both feet on the platform, of course, but I mean, I thought he was going to go, and then he had you underneath the ball as well. That's right. I was uh, lost my balance there, but I weren't going to give up. I still was trying. Colin, finally, you picked up five points. Well, all right, it's long overdue, and I had to get a couple of points, otherwise my family ain't going to speak to me anymore. <laughs> We're going to totally disown me, so I have to get some points from somewhere. You certainly did. Well done. You worked very hard for them as well. Colin and Cobra. And finally, after four events, a score on the board. Paul still with nil, but Colin's got five. <laughs> this is great fun, isn't it, Wolfie? Hey! Yeah, great. Come on, Wolfman, look out the window! No, leave me alone. Actually, it's quite nice. It's not even bumpy. Look how close to the ground we're flying. This is great. Uh, there's a reason for that, Wolf. We haven't taken off yet. No! <laughs> no come here, come on. And first up is Celia! Facing I suppose that's what they call a lightning conductor. She conceded five points on the sumo ball to Ingrid. Can she fare better against Celia? Three, two, one. Lightning swings. The mistress of the match finish in this event. Celia not so used to aerial combat, but there's nothing tough about Sergeant Duffield. It must be said, though, this is more suited to the paratroopers than an HGV driver. It's the scoring zone she's looking for, not Lightning, though she swung straight into trouble. Oh, Lightning's legs lock her up. Now comes the body weight. Textbook takedown. The family disappointed, but the audience sing along. Oh, Lightning head over heels with that result. Now they make their way for a chat with Fash. Oh, unlucky Celia. You made life easier for Lightning. You went straight to her. I really wanted to try hard on that, so I really enjoy that game. Unlucky. Lightning, well done. She made it easy for you, didn't she? Well, I tried to go for the double ring at the beginning, but I didn't quite get there, so I had to change my tactics. But that gave us a little bit more time to have a little conversation up there, didn't it? 
Oh, well done. Well done, Celia. Well done, Lightning. Off you go. Oh, dismissed by Fash. Hope your mum's not watching. And next up, it's Ingrid! And she's going to be facing the beautiful Vogue! The dictionary defines the word Vogue as prevailing fashion mode and style, and that sums her up nicely. And a summation of her stats reads rather nicely too, but against Ingrid, she's eight centimetres shorter, four kilos lighter. Contender, ready! Gladiator, ready! Oh, she winked at me. Three, two, one! Well, Vogue knows that her opponent, Ingrid, won't be so confident hanging from the ring grid as some of the contenders she's faced. When you're a housewife and mum, swinging between rings isn't required too often. Mind you, being a housewife is a little more demanding, isn't it? But Ingrid swings into the scoring zone. Now she needs to keep out of trouble. And Vogue coming back at her. And Ingrid takes advantage of the swing and backs away. Vogue opens up, but Ingrid refuses to be trapped. She's swinging back again. And this time, Vogue snaps shut, letting her fingers do the working. Can Ingrid top it out? No, she's gone. And Simon and Ingrid's sisters dejected at that defeat. Simon says, I'm acting, love it. Ingrid! Oh, unlucky! You had a lot of determination on your face. Oh, I, yeah, that's not going to get me along, though. <laughs> you started off slowly, but you look like you mean business then. I did, but I've lost out in the gorilla grip. It's not good news. <laughs> Couple more seconds and you could have done it. Five points, you're in the scoring zone. Oh, no, she was pulling hard, too hard. Vogue, well done. She made life a little bit harder than what you expected. She did. I started off on my route and then she started to go the other way. That's when I had to traverse across and then we were both swinging at the same time and I just had to time it right and going for the kill and uh, she was hanging on just a little bit much but I was going, here we go, here we go and uh, eventually... Well done, Ingrid. Well done, Vogue. Off you go. After five big events, Celia stays on 10, Ingrid on 15. And the first of our male contenders is Paul! It must be a full moon out tonight because he's looking mean. The wild thing ready to swing. And if we study his stats, he's a crucial centimetre taller than Paul and four kilos heavier. Three, two, one. Wolfie, a big swing specialist, a testimony to those huge shoulders, hits the centre red ring in two swings. And the wolf looking to waste no time on Paul, dogged determination. The Paul's in the scoring zone and boots the Wolf away. Double footed. Back for another clash, but Wolf one ringed. Paul using the feet again. That's not legal. And Wolf getting a fair old pasting up there. That's what he said. Paul saying, have a bit more of that. The referee stopped it. It must be a disqualification for Paul. Wolf drops down. That's a turn up for the books, isn't it? Wolf on the receiving end. Paul joins him. John Anderson's gone for a walk. Oh, Wolf! Gone for a push. Wolf's claiming it. Collins fans are loving every minute of it. John, just explain to us why you stopped it. Well, the rules are very clear. It is permitted to use feet to ward off. It is not, however, permitted to use feet to kick. There is a fine line. And much as I regret this, particularly in view of the fact that it's Wolf, contender is disqualified. <laughs> Sorry about that. What are you going to say for yourself? Well, I'm, I was well aware of the rules that you're not allowed to kick. In my view, I didn't kick. He was coming at me. I used my feet to fend him off. He looked scared to me. He dropped off before me. He didn't want to know. OK. Thanks very much, Paul. Sorry about that. Wolf, well done. As much as it hurts me. Let's do it for the Wolf Man! Yeah. Wolf's the worst when well, he came off best that time. And the last with our male contenders to hang tough is Colin! And he's going to be facing the man who always gets his prey, the Hunter! This man, Hunter, is no Billy Bunter. That physique boasts 106 kilos of weight and a 127-centimetre chest. Woo! Oh, what a John Anderson. Contender! A 
man of few words. Three, two, one. But plenty of action. Hunter, 20 centimeters taller than Colin and 30 kilos heavier, so Colin's got to stay out of trouble if he wants to get in the points. Hunter almost at the red rings. Colin has four brothers and four sisters, but he's a man alone up there tonight. Onto a red ring and coming down the left wing. Hunter looking for a piece of the action by traversing. Colin retreats a ring. There's the Southern team coach, Phil Norman, watching the aerial chess match from his vantage points. Colin right on the wing, which makes it very difficult for Hunter to make an approach, but Colin retreating and making his way across for some reason. Colin very good at traversing from wing to wing, but not so hot at heading for Hunter's platform. Trying to keep out of trouble. Oh, but Hunter's got him! And Hunter trying to dislodge his man, but Colin's hanging tough. This is tragic, he's not in the scoring zone. Oh, he's making Hunter look small despite his size. What a remarkable display of sheer strength by Colin. Holding up 106 kilos of Gladiator. And Hunter decides to drop out. And it's a rare contender that gets the better of him. Colin treasuring the moment he saw off Hunter. And Phil knows the stark reality. Colin's family think it's all over. Well, it is now. And the Hunter congratulating that remarkable display of strength. Colin's brother Winston there and sister Carol. Let's look at that courageous performance again. Colin went back to the middle of the grid, which enabled Hunter to grab a hold, then bring the enormous force of his entire 106 kilos of weight to bear. Hunter was shaking and quaking, but Colin wasn't breaking. And it was Hunter who was being hung out to dry, despite his best efforts. But for the sake, Colin, you know that if you get past the red set of rings, you get into the scoring zone. You were not in the scoring zone. Fantastic performance, I know it's going to disappoint all your supporters and fans, but you didn't score. Heck of a performance, but unfortunately, no points. Sorry, Colin. Colin and his dad, Winston, gutted. Hunter, have you met anybody like Colin before? <laughs> yeah, he's got some serious strength to hold me. I weigh about 16 and a half stone. I was pulling with all my might, and, uh, well, this is all I ended up with in the end, so uh, I don't think I'm going to give him back for the Eliminator. But very strong contender. He'll do well in the Eliminator. Good luck. Let's hear it for Colin! And the Hunter! Colin Treasure with a show of strength that will go down in the Gladiator history books. After five long events, Paul comes away with nothing and Colin with five. So after all that excitement, we're going to have a well-deserved break. But don't go away, it's the Eliminator here on the Gladiators! indoor arena here in Birmingham where it's eliminator time in our southern heats now Celia's on 10 points Ingrid's ahead on 15 points that's a five point difference giving Ingrid a two and a half second head start over to you Fash you heard what Ollie said you got two and a half seconds head start which is not a lot would you make it two and a half hours please <laughs> we I don't think we can do that are you worried about any of the course Ingrid uh, just all of it Fash just all of it <laughs> do you think you'll get through Oh, I'll get through, yeah, yeah. Good. Yes. <laughs> Good. Celia, you've got two and a half seconds to make up. Can you do it? And if you can, where are you going to make up those seconds? I'll make the two seconds up on the cargo net. OK, we'll see how you go. Both girls, wish you all the best. Ingrid, you will go on my first whistle. CJ, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Ingrid sets off over the highs and the lows. Ingrid, a bigger, more powerful contender, knows she'll find the Eliminator course tougher than Celia. Celia joins Ingrid in the amazing bungee jungle. Ingrid's sister, Rachel, finding it hard to keep her cool as Ingrid extricates herself from the elastic, stayed low while Celia went higher, which probably held her back. Celia onto the rope. Here's where she may start to pull that lead back. Yeah, she's almost neck and neck, with brother Simon cheering on. In fact, Celia tackling the ladder first. It's close, but Celia will hit the rollers in the lead. Spans the rollers at speed. Next, it's the net, her favourite element on the entire eliminator. Reg is standing. Julian's just sitting there. And Ingrid, climbing well, soaring like an Ingrid Bergman. Celia not having the dream net she was expecting. Her mum, Daphne, willing her up. They hit the gantry, almost together, neck and neck. Celia tops it off first. 
The three sisters check off each element, but they must realise that Net took it out of Ingrid. Celia on the slip for the ripping zip trip. Here's Ingrid with a very tired crash landing. Celia on the beam. This must be meat and drink to an army girl. Ingrid finding it tough. And Celia is ready for the sprint to glory. Red's giving it plenty. And so is Celia. Makes it look so easy as Celia Duffield swings into the southern semi-final. And Red hasn't stopped clapping all night. Daphne delighted. So's Victor. And it's Ingrid up the travelator. All smiles. A sensational contender. A remarkable housewife and mum. I mean, it was incredible. I've really trained hard for the last event, and it all came together. I'm really, really pleased. It certainly did. I mean, here's a medal, just to say you were here today, and your fans have been absolutely terrific. Are you prepared to come back and do it all over again? Definitely, Ollie, definitely. Can't wait. We we'll look forward to seeing you there. Let's hear it for CJ. Well done. England, you had two and a half seconds head start. She caught you up. Where did she catch you up? I told you, I needed two and a half hours. Well, I think she actually caught you up on the cargo net, like she said she would. Yeah, weight's been... The weight has been for me in the show, but come the Eliminator, lighter girl. Yeah, she's there, she did really well. Well done, Celia. Well, you don't go away empty-handed, because there's your gladiator medal. I think you better go off and thank all your supporters and all your fans. <laughs> Thanks, Ash, yeah, I will do. Off you go. Let's hear it for Ingrid! And the crowd sit down in united acclamation. Well, they're tired. Celia with a cuddle for Reg. There's one for Mum. Not forgetting Dad. The two victors together. Here's Ingrid. What did you do today, Mummy? Julian Proud. There's Milo and Tully. Bet they picked those names from the Paula Yates book. And in the grand £1,000 fastest eliminator quest, Celia's time of 1 minute 30.3 poses no threat to Sarah Dam's existing record. But for tonight, Collins' five-point lead boils down to a 2.5-second eliminator head start. Well, Paul, tonight it's not really been your show as far as scoring points goes. No, you could say that, yeah. You've yet to score, of course, but at the end of the day, I suppose it's all down to the eliminator. Well, we've just seen Celia do it with two and a half seconds deficit, so uh, I'm going to give it the best shot. Absolutely, and... Um, Colin, yes, you've scored a few points, but for somebody who likes playing with numbers, it's not been a great amount, has there? House! <laughs> <laughs> now, as you saw there, two and a half seconds isn't much. It's more or less like we're starting off together, so, you know, wish for my good luck, and uh, we're, really, we're both going to fight for it, believe me. I bet you will. And may the best man win. Good luck to the two of you. Colin, you will go on my first whistle. Paul, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Colin Treasure, the doorman from Birmingham, gets underway, followed by Paul Dunkley, the broker from Islington. Colin swimming through the mesh. Oh, and Paul with a bad landing on that right knee. That could cost him. Colin wriggles like a man possessed out of a rubber, while Paul looks to be stranded in the strands. A nightmare for him and for Olivia. Colin on the cycle, those strong arms still pumping, and Paul stuck in the web like a spider's next meal. Colin finishes his biking. Now comes the test of the rollers and the nets. The family know his lead is almost unassailable, but a lot can go wrong. Paul finally emerges from the bungee. It's not been his night at all. Bravely up, a heartbreaking sight for Olivia. Colin on the net in total control. His dad, Winston, orchestrating the applause. Colin makes it to the gantry, hauls himself up. Meanwhile, Paul works that bike, hoping for a mistake from Colin. Cross the rollers and falls headlong into the net. Colin with a crash landing. Carol having a dance. And for Paul, the nightmare continues. That right leg giving him chip, and it's all too distressing for Olivia and Elizabeth. Colin on the beam, his balance impeccable. Poised for the final dash up the travelator. Oh, he made short work of it. He's there. Another southern semi finalist, Colin Treasure from Birmingham. Gladiators never without its ups and downs. 
And down clunks Paul Dunkley. That right knee must be agony, but he still fights on. The family stunned by his bad luck. He's on the beam. The crowd will him on. Not least his mum, Elizabeth. Up the travelator. He's going to need everything he's got. Fights the pain barrier and receives the acclaim. What a brave man. Well, Colin, congratulations. Before we do anything, there's your winner's medal. Have you got a message for everyone in the house being a local boy? Well, first, I would like to say thanks to all the guys that helped me out game at the time to try and reach your facilities. Ian Lancaster, Al Malcolm, Steve McNennis, everybody. And what I wanted to say to all you guys before we started was this. Anything I do, yes, anything I do, I do it for you. Thanks a lot, guys. Nice one. Let's hear it for Colin! Go for it, Colin! Well done. Well, Paul, you may feel that you lost the eliminator, which you did, but you're certainly not a loser. You've come a long way to be on Gladiators. You've beaten thousands to be here. You're a very, very fit guy, but things just didn't go your way tonight. Yeah, I, things went well in training, but I just didn't perform on the night, and fair play to Colin, he did well. And you've got a tremendous crowd there behind you. You've come a long way to see you as well and giving you some support. I'm sure you'll enjoy having a little refreshment with them a little bit later on. This is for you, from us, to say well done for coming on Gladiator. Thanks very much. I've enjoyed it immensely. I'm now looking forward to a beer. Oh. I bet you are. Let's hear it for Paul Dunn. That man deserves a pint, and so do I. Paul did his supporters proud. And there's Colin there with his family, and they're pleased as punch. Paul with his runners-up prize. Oh, pleased with a kiss. Oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh, it must have been the knee. In the men's fastest eliminator contest, Buster Reed's record of 109 wasn't troubled by Colin's time of 127.9. So the Northern Series winners still both hold the fastest times. Whoa, I wish I could sing like Colin, Ollie. Well, thank goodness you can't. <laughs> anyway, nonetheless, Celia and Colin will go through to the next stage, so join us next week for more action here on Gladiators. Oh, Wonga! For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. In a few moments here on Challenge, Jim Bowen and Tony Green are here as three more couples get ready to play bullseye and try to win a speedboat. Probably. Then later, Bradley's here trying to hold it all together in the chase. That's weekends at nine.